Hello and welcome. So today I'm going to talk about pyramids and cones and specifically I'm going to talk about the basic terms that you should know before trying to jump into any equations with these figures. So we all know what a pyramid is, but there are different kinds of pyramids. So the one that we are probably most familiar with would be this right pyramid to the right here. So all pyramids are geometric solids and they have one face that is a polygon called the base. So in this case, the base of my right pyramid is a square, and the base of this other pyramid is also a square. And a square is a polygon with four sides. And all the other faces of this pyramid are triangles, and they're also called lateral faces. Lateral meaning on the side. So the faces on the side of this pyramid are, all have the same shape, they're all triangles. And you'll be able to figure out how many lateral faces those pyramids will have by knowing how many sides the base has. So in this case, our base has four sides because it's a square. So there are four lateral faces on each pyramid. There are four triangles that come up off the pyramid. And all of those lateral faces meet together at the top to have a common vertex, meaning the spot where all of them meet. And all of these lateral faces intersect in segments called the lateral edges. So all of these spots where two lateral faces touch is called a lateral edge. And then there is one thing that's different between the oblique pyramid and the right pyramid. So if you look at this oblique pyramid, it's kind of just slanted while the right pyramid stands straight up. So the axis is the segment joining the vertex to the center of the base. So if I find the point that's the center of my base on both of these triangles, and then I draw a line up to the vertex, that would be my axis. So in my oblique pyramid, that axis is slanted, and on the right pyramid, the axis is straight. And the altitude of a pyramid is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the plane of the base. So if I find my vertex and I go to that tip, and then I draw a straight line down to the floor from my vertex. You'll see these pictures actually already have them for you, so let me just color that a little bit darker. On the oblique pyramid, that altitude does not hit the center of the base. It kind of falls to the side of it, but on the right pyramid, it falls right on that center. I just didn't draw the best center. So therefore, the altitude and the axis on the right pyramid are actually the same line. They're the same thing. And the last term you should know for these pyramids is that the length of the altitude is also the height of the pyramid. So from the floor to the highest point of that pyramid is the height. Now the pyramid on the right is a special kind of pyramid. It is actually called a right pyramid, which I've been calling it this whole time, but now I'm gonna tell you why. So a right pyramid is a pyramid whose axis is at a right angle to the base. So if I follow this line that I made here, you can see that it makes a right angle with the base of the pyramid. But my axis over here does not make a right angle. The altitude does, but I'm only I only care about the axis. And to keep it simple, Throughout the book, we're only going to talk about right pyramids. You don't have to worry about any oblique pyramids for now. And there is one certain type of right pyramid that we consider important. Those right pyramids are called regular pyramids. So for a pyramid to be a regular pyramid, it has to already be a right pyramid, and the base has to be a regular polygon. So I don't know if you remember the definition of a regular polygon, but for a polygon to be regular, every side has to be of equal length, and all the angles have to be of equal measure. So if my triangle has a base that is a square, it is a regular pyramid. If it had a base that was a rectangle, it could not be a regular pyramid because a rectangle does not have equal sides. These sides are equal, but these sides are not. So all of the sides of the base have to be equal and all of the angles have to be equal. So like in this square, they are all right angles, and that one is regular. And a fact to know is that the lateral faces of a regular pyramid will all be identical isosceles triangles. 
So in the case of my right pyramid right here, this is obviously a regular pyramid because a square has four equal sides. So this is a regular right pyramid. And every single one of these triangles is an identical isosceles triangle. So remember, isosceles means that two of the sides are equivalent and one side is not. And then one other thing I can figure out here is the slant height, which is just the height of one of those triangles, one of those lateral faces. So if I wanted to find the height of one of these triangles, I couldn't use this side because that's really like the hypotenuse of this triangle. It's not actually the height. The height would be from the center to the base. So this right here, making that right angle, would be the slant height. And we can only solve for that in a regular pyramid, not in an oblique pyramid. Now, if you want to name pyramids, we're going to name them based on what their base is. So let me show you some examples. Okay, so here I have a couple different triangles and they all have different shapes as bases. So the first one here has a triangular base, so it would be called a triangular pyramid. Now, in my case, all of the sides of this triangle aren't the same. I have two sides that are equal and one side that is not, so this is actually an isosceles triangle. If it was an equilateral triangle that has three equal sides, I could call it a regular triangular pyramid, but this one is not regular. So the next one I have has a square base, just like in my last example. So I'm gonna call it a square pyramid and all four sides of the square are equal, so it is a regular square pyramid. In my next one, the base is a rectangle, so I will call it a rectangular pyramid. And it cannot be a regular pyramid because not all four sides of a rectangle are equivalent, but it can be right. So if I draw a line from the vertex to the center of my rectangle, it does form a right angle, so I can call it a right rectangular pyramid as opposed to an oblique one. And my final example here has five sides. The base is a pentagon, so I can say it's a pentagonal pyramid, and all five sides are of equal lengths, so I can call it a regular pentagonal pyramid. My cat is meowing at me. Okay, that's enough for pyramids, and let's start talking about cones. So just like with the pyramids, I have two kinds of cones. I can have a right circular cone or an oblique circular cone. So both of the bases are circles, so we label them just like we did with the pyramids. They are circular cones, and whether that vertex is straight up or slanted makes that cone either a right cone or an oblique cone. So a cone is basically like a pyramid, except the base is a closed curve instead of a polygon. It will not have sides, so this base does not have any sides. The curved surface between the vertex and the base is called the lateral surface. So just like we had lateral faces on a triangle, there's not really any faces on this cone, there's just one curved face, which we call the lateral surface. And I forgot to label the base for you, so let me do that now. And the vertex, remember, is just that tip on the top. So the segment joining the vertex to the center of the base, just like before, is called the axis. So I go from the vertex all the way down to the center of my base. And I just noticed that this says pyramid and not cone on the other side, so I need to fix that. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the line of that axis by finding the center of my circle and drawing a line from the vertex down. So you see on the oblique cone that that axis is slanted, but on my right cone, the axis is a straight line that makes a right angle with the base. The altitude of the cone is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the base. So remember, you go from the highest point of the cone to the lowest point. So on the right cone, that's exactly the same as my axis. So I'll just go right over that. That is also my altitude or my height, but on the oblique cone, it's a little bit more complicated because that vertex, when I make a straight line down to the lowest point, is not the same as the axis. The altitude is a different line. 
and the length of that altitude is the height of the cone. And the cone on the left here is a special type of cone. It's called a right cone. It's making a right angle with the base and the axis is also the altitude. And just like with pyramids, we're only going to really care about the right cones for now. And just like before, the distance from the vertex to any point on the circle, any spot around the circumference of that circle, makes the slant height. So the height of the slant of this cone. So in this case, it would be right here. That would be my slant height. And we can only find the slant, slant height for right circular cones. So for now, we're only going to talk about right circular cones. You're not going to have to worry about any of these weird guys. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that helps you understand the terms that you need to know for pyramids and cones.